if you turn to page 17, first question we'll do is the 2019 question, question 12C, worth 24 marks. The reason there that we have a little space to put in our, our gap at the bottom is because you would have to answer that in a, in a booklet, a separate booklet, where section A and B you actually write on the exam itself. These questions, you will, by the end of this course, be able to actually write them yourselves. You, that's how much of an expert you will be at this exam. That is our ultimate goal. Anyway, it says photosynthesis occurs in two stages, the light dependent stage and the light independent dark stage. So for many of you guys, this might be your first leaving cert question. Uh, so you might, be, you might be very, very, very excited. Two structures found in plant cells are shown below. Now, contentious question, 2019, there was two kind of picture questions that people were not happy with. This was one of them, because depending on what book you have, what set of notes, you might not have those exact diagrams. They show a 3D shape, most of them show a 2D sh shape. The one that looks like my granddad's slipper is actually meant to be a mitochondria, A. And you can kind of see the infoldings there if you chop through it. You never really get shown that it's like a pill. Part B is actually the, or the, part, the B section there is actually a chloroplast and you can see from the little stacks there. Now if the worst came to the worst, you could definitely guess that. And then it says, in which of the two structures, A or B, does photosynthesis occur? So it's B. You didn't even have to name it, so B. Grant, give a balanced chemical equation to summarize the process of photosynthesis. Okay, not a problem. 6CO2 plus 6H2O in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, or light and chlorophyll, gives us C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Name two products of the light-dependent stage of photosynthesis. Okay, well we have three. We'll just name two though, will we? ATP and NADPH, you could also. Grant, some of the products of the light dependent stage are used in the light independent stage, outline the events of the light independent stage. One thing that I find with students that come in from other schools into the Dublin Academy say, is they don't know how much points to put down. Or they see a word like outline, or describe, or write notes on the following, and they don't know how to react to that. That is part of what we are trying to build here, because a good grade is 50% biology, 50% knowing how to handle the exam. I've seen students, some students who are incredible at biology, come into me and then say that we're not performing well on exams, yet I could actually speak with them and they could debate all this sort of stuff. Remember what we are focused on here. So this is the first idea, outline. If I asked you to outline how you got to school or outline what you've done so far today, you're not going into massive detail about it. You're not telling me, well, I, the alarm rang at 6 a.m. and I uh, heard my dog barking downstairs and I neatly slipped off. <laughs> this is how good I am in English. I slipped off the cover and I put my right foot down first and then the, my left foot. And my, my left foot felt a little bit colder than my right foot. And I, hold, I don't know. All that's, that's not it. Say if you're getting to school, well, I uh, got up, I had breakfast, and I got the bus. Okay, fantastic. Outline the events of the light independence stage. So let's keep it very simple. I'll show you how many key points we need now in a second. Okay, but light independence stage, well, this is controlled by enzymes, which affects pH and temperature. That could be a point. CO2 is absorbed. That could be a point. If you said, diff if you said diffused into the stomata, there's another point. If you said, okay, well then, this carbon dioxide binds with the protons and the electrons, okay, to form, to form glucose, that's another point. If you say the energy for this reaction is, comes from ATP, that's another point. If you say the protons and electrons come from NADPH, that's another point. If you then say that the low energy molecules or that the NADPH becomes NADP plus and the ATP becomes ADP, that's another point. If you then say they are recycled back into the light stage, that is another point. Now, in every single one of my handouts, we have every single official marking scheme, marking scheme from the examiner. Now, so if you go forward a couple of pages, I have every single exam question in, in the notes. So if you go forward a couple of pages to the solutions, you will see the 2019 solution is on page 31. And you will see, look, at the, light, the events of the light independent stage, you needed three points. Three points. Three. Okay, of all those there, what did I say, like nine? You needed three points. Okay, something I would note. Looking at how many points you need is good. Never look at the marks. You will never know how much marks go for certain things in your leaving certain until after the fact. 
If people did start to do very poorly on a question, they will change the marking scheme, which is something we'll learn about later on. But for now, just only focus on the points that they're asking for. Okay, in that case, there was three. The second question I want to do, and I'll leave a few of them there for you to do, to do yourself, is the 2013 question, and that is on page... Now, this is my arch nemesis here, the, as you'll see. It, it's on page 21. I don't mean this question, I mean turning pages. Okay, so 2013 question 14a, this is worth 30 marks. There's two questions on your exam where you, if you choose them, you have choice again. Question 14 and question 15, there's parts A, B, and C, and you only have to do A, B, A, C, or B, C. You have to do two of the three parts, if you pick those questions. This question we're gonna do here is worth 30 marks. So we're gonna get 7.5% of our grade in this question here, in around 30 seconds. We have why 30 seconds? Because we've done all the good stuff on the back end to set us up with this information. Okay. Answer any two of the following. The scheme below summarizes the process of photosynthesis. So we've got the first stage, which contains pathway one and two, grant. And then uh, we've got the second stage. Okay, grant. That's, thanks for that information. I really appreciate that. Give the name of the first stage. It's the light stage. Great. In the first stage, pathways one and two relate to the passage of energized electrons. Oh no, I'm scared of this one. Not anymore. Explain what happens to these pathways and pathway or to these electrons in pathway one. I can't even read and I can do this exam. Okay, so explain what happens to the electrons. The electrons absorb light energy or absorb en energy from light. They bounce around from electron acceptor to electron acceptor. In the process, they lose energy. That energy is trapped by ADP. That energy forms ATP those electrons return to the chlorophyll. Every time I had a pause, like this, that signified a key point. Guess how many key points you needed for full marks? Two. And the fact that you said cyclic in this, which I didn't even mention, but you probably would use, that counts as one key point. So you'd say one other thing, okay? And it's easy once you know that's what you need. If you don't know, well, suddenly it's, it's like an idea, maybe you're in, a, you're in an ice cream shop and there's thousands of flavors and you're trying to select the two flavors you need. Okay, and there's thousands, you can't even do it. One time I was in Venice over the last summer and uh, I, had to, I had to literally have to walk out of the shop. I was too overwhelmed. Now imagine that in a pressurized leaving cert exam question. Okay, so that's why we study this way. We study towards the exam. Anyway, describe the events of pathway two. Well, pathway two is non-cyclic, grant. The electrons absorb energy from light. They bounce around from electron acceptor to electron acceptor. In the process, they lose energy. That energy is trapped by ADP, then forms ATP, if you want the high energy molecule. They don't return to the chlorophyll. They, those electrons combine with protons and NADP plus to form NADPH. Perfect, again, how many did you need? Two, and even if you look at the marking scheme, there was eight possible points that you could have given. You needed two for full marks. Okay, give the name of the second stage. Dark stage, okay, light independent is fine too. Explain why the second stage is given to the name referred to in part three. Doesn't need light, great. Give one reason why the second stage cannot happen without the first stage. We need one reason. Why, cannot, why can't this stage happen without this? Well, because the dark stage needs the products of the light stage. It's very straightforward. Outline the major events of the second stage. There's that word again. Look, outline. I got up. I had breakfast. I got the bus to school. Okay, let's just go through it again. Dark stage is controlled by enzymes, which are affected by pH and temperature. CO2 is absorbed, if you want, again, diffusion through the stomata, etc. CO2, protons and electrons combine using the energy from ATP to form glucose. Protons and electrons came from the NADPH, great. The low energy versions, if you wanted to, or you can name them NADP plus ADP, uh, return and recycled back into the light stage. Perfect, so that there was 7.5% of your grade. So think about it, you've got every single class that you did on photosynthesis, every single breakdown, 
and that is what you need to know. I suggest you probably spend a lot of time on it. And it's a very, very important chapter, definitely. But what you actually need to know is a hell of a lot different than what is actually taught to you in school. Okay, now I want to show you briefly how to study experiments before, before we finish up here. Because this is one of the biggest myths that I see floating around. I mentioned at the start, but I have to fully, fully just get set the record straight. There is no marks going for your write-up book. Now, you can do whatever you want with that. You want to obviously get by in school. You don't want to get in trouble or anything like that. But there's literally no marks going for that. And the way that you have to write up a biology experiment is actually detrimental towards how you answer a question. So you will see in my handout with every single experiment question on it, or in this, in this handout here even, with, just, with the photosynthesis experiment on it, what I do is I cut down exactly what we need to know to answer an exam question on it. So if you turn the page now and you go to um, page 15, you will look here, I have, I have put down a diagram method result conclusion and another diagram this is a key experiment really 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 key and i'm going to explain it to you on the board here now but you do not have to learn your massive write-up i only put down the method there because i'm not going to be there to explain this to you again you will see i haven't got equipment i haven't got all these different like ideas of different milliliters and stuff it is unnecessary as long as you can explain an experiment and you understand it you will do very well on those questions this question here, ironically, is the one experiment on the course where there's a choice. So some of you guys, well, sorry, 90% of you guys would have studied the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. And 10 of you guys, if your teacher is a nerd, would have gone and studied the carbon dioxide uh, difference there. I'm not going to do that, but just feel free to interchange light and carbon dioxide if you did that one. One isn't right and wrong. They both don't come up. You just answer which one, on which one you studied in school. What actually happens is, is really, really straightforward how, how we study this, is every single person is gonna have a slightly different setup in school. That's fine as long as you show the experiment uh, itself. Where's my trusty green? That sounds bad, doesn't it? Okay, there's my, there's my green marker there. So what we're gonna do is we're measuring the rate of photosynthesis. How we measure it is by the production of oxygen, how it releases oxygen into the atmosphere. If you look out the window now, there's photosynthesis going on in that tree, that bush, that flower, the, like that piece of grass. There's photosynthesis going on. You can't see it because oxygen is a colorless, odorless gas. It's colorless and odorless. So what we use for this experiment is a pond plant. And most of us will have used a pond plant called Elodea. So I get a water bath in school and I put the pond plant Elodea in here. Cool. Now, why do we use the elodea? Well, because that elodea is going to photosynthesize, release oxygen, and then the oxygen is gonna form these bubbles. And from those bubbles, we can count the rate of photosynthesis. Grant. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the, rate, the amount of carbon dioxide in and around the area can actually affect the rate of photosynthesis. So what we do, just to make sure it doesn't affect this experiment, is we add baking soda or sodium bicarbonate or whatever one you used in school to add excess CO2 to this water. We don't want the plant running out of, of carbon dioxide and that to affect the rate of photosynthesis. The next thing is with these bubbles, the examiner always asks about this, how do you measure the rate of photosynthesis? People say bubbles, don't do that because you could be counting the bubbles for the rest of your life. You want to measure the rate of photosynthesis, so we always say the amount of bubbles produced per minute or per 30 seconds or per time, whatever you did. Then it's very simple. What we are going to do is we're going to put a, a light here. So look, here's my, I'm just going to, uh, how will I draw the light uh, for this one? We'll draw a little light bulb there. Okay, it kind of looks like a skull, but you get this light bulb. And what you do is you leave the light bulb for five minutes, we say in the notes, but a few minutes anyway, and you allow the plant to settle. Okay, so you allow the plant to settle. Then after five minutes, it's actually photosynthesizing 
with this light here, with that light intensity, because it takes a few minutes to catch up to it. Then what you do is you count the bubbles per minute, and then you move the lamp a little bit closer. So let's just say it's now here. That obviously increases the light intensity. You leave it for five minutes again, and then you count the bubbles per minute. Then you move it closer, and you would have done this at various distances. It doesn't matter if you remember, well, for actually this is important. It doesn't matter if you remember your results or what your distances were or anything like that. They can't ask you questions on them. The whole general idea is light, leave, leave the light, count the bubbles, move the light, leave it for five minutes, count the bubbles, move the light, leave it for five minutes, count the bubbles. And for the most part, the closer the light gets to the plant or as the light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases up to a point. And there is one last thing the examiner can ask you about in these questions, one very last thing. They can ask you to draw a graph of your results. Now, when they ask you to draw a graph of your results on the entire course, you don't need to know any numbers ever, but you might need to be able to label the actual axis themselves. Okay, so how we label the axis themselves is what happens is, well, this is actually a nice one for you to know anyway. In these axes here, whatever goes on the y-axis always depends on what happens on the x-axis. So if you're not sure which one is which, just test them out. What we are looking at here is the rate of photosynthesis and light intensity. So if I have the rate of photosynthesis here, and then I have the light intensity here, does that work? Yeah, the rate of photosynthesis depends on light intensity, not the other way around. Light intensity doesn't depend on the rate of photosynthesis. But what actually happens is, as the light intensity levels go up, as it goes up, well, the rate of photosynthesis goes up, up to a point, and then we get a flat line. And that flat line, that curve, is called the saturation point. Saturation point. Cool. And the reason for that is, the plant can only absorb a certain amount of light. So even if you put 50 lights on it now, it can only take in a certain amount at a time. So kind of like say if this classroom was full, and there was 20 of us in this room, and we all had to get out this one door. No matter how fast we wanted to get out that door, only like two or three of us could fit out at once. The plant gets up to a point of saturation, and you definitely have to be able to, to uh, point out what that means. And it's just like saturation in your clothes, it can't let in any more water. Okay, and that's the experiment. That's it. The types of questions the examiner can ask you. They could ask you to draw a diagram. They might ask you why you use the pond plant. They might ask you how you uh, measure the rate of photosynthesis. They might ask you something about why you left it for five minutes to settle so it adapts to the rate of photosynthesis. And they might ask you this graph. Okay, and if that comes up again, you know, that's another 30 marks, which is 7.5% of your, of your exam. We have all the, all the metrics of when they've come up in our notes as well, but if we just turn our notes uh, to try one of these questions to prove to you that we can answer any questions on this here, uh, we will go to the experiment questions and um, we are on uh, page 28. So the 2018 question, question eight, says the process of photosynthesis in plants is divided into two stages, the light and the dark stage. Where in the cell does the dark stage take place? Okay, where in the cell? Where is it? It's in the chloroplast. Okay, not the chlorophyll. Why is the dark stage called the dark stage? It doesn't need light. So you can see already the questions repeating themselves again and again, and you will find that. That's why I said you'll, I want you to be bored doing your leading search. Anyway, answer the following questions in relation to an activity that you carried out to investigate the influence of light intensity or carbon dioxide concentration on the rate of photosynthesis. We did light intensity, so forget the carbon dioxide concentration. Name the plant, Elodea. Give a reason for using this plant. It's a water plant that allows us to count the rate of photosynthesis using bubbles. How did you measure the rate of photosynthesis? The amount of bubbles per minute. On the next page, it says label the axis below and sketch a graph to show how the rate of photosynthesis would change as your chosen factor varied over a wide range. There's the graph there, isn't it? Rate of photosynthesis, light intensity, and draw some sort of curve where it's increasing and flattens off. No numbers necessary. Great. Explain the shape of your graph. 
as light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases up to a point of saturation. That's it. That's it. Those two questions that we did come up, that's 15% of your grade. How long did it take to answer those questions? Apart from my explanation in between them, what, like genuinely 76 seconds? And that is not because I'm a genius or maybe you are a genius. You're probably way smarter than I am. But it's because I've taken the time to develop this strategy to invent these principles of our school that have worked for years. Like for this school I've built over the last decade, it's built on results, not on your man's use as a green marker. But built on results. And these show, have shown these principles to work. Okay, so if you enjoyed today, if you liked it and you wanted to consider signing up, I just have to mention a few things about the, the weekly grinds themselves. I have to mention a, a, couple of, a couple of times and give you a couple of ideas and tell you what you get. Well, actually, first of all, if you're interested in signing up based on today, you, all the details are on the website for, for uh, the different classes or you can contact the reception. Really straightforward and easy if you wanted to try, uh, try them out. Then after that, what we get, what you guys will get from this package is you get my set of exam notes for every single unit, which as we said is broken down into six parts. You will get a handout on the experiments themselves, also actually uses a workbook to get you up to speed on those 23 to guarantee you over 50 marks as long as you work the principles. If not 60, I would suggest most people going for 60, but that makes a few people get a little bit daunted. You will get my specific exam strategy as well as finally you will get what I have every single year is what I call my potential questions and I make an exam based on what I feel is coming up as well as, oh sorry as well as the past paper questions as well so you get you get a lot in, in this sign up here and then what we build it towards is remember our 24 pages our 24 pages which will allow us to without a doubt with ease go ahead and, and um, uh, you know, review just before the exam without having to look at the book, without even having to look at the notes here. So you can see the notes are concise exactly to the point. When are the classes? Well, if I erase this experiment here, hope by the way, with the experiment, I hope I've changed your mind on that. This is how we study experiments, no write-ups. Imagine you learned all the equipment, how, how appalling that would be. Okay, so that's with every experiment, by the way, just so you know. So the classes themselves, when they, when they are on, well, they're, they're taught by me in Stillorgan here, and I'm teaching on Monday at 8, which is always a really, really busy class. Tuesday at half 5. Uh, Wednesday's in Colester, if you're, if you're out there at, at 6 p.m. Uh, and Saturday, Saturday at 9 a.m. So we, we use the same stuff every single week. This, the classes are also available and recorded online. If maybe you can't get into Stillorgan, you're just kind of saying to yourself, it's a little bit awkward. Uh, or maybe you play sports on a certain day, so, or maybe you've got training after school, or maybe you like to keep it separate. We have them all online as well, where you get the, you get the same, same content, same notes as we spoke about before, same experiments. Um, I understand if you're a little bit hesitant. Like right now, you're still during the summer, and you know, obviously congratulations for you to completing this course today. I feel you would have got a, a hell of a lot out of it. I sympathise with it. it has been a tough time, it has been a tough number of months, but even if you just got confidence out of this, I'm telling you now every topic is the same in biology, and I'm telling you overarchingly from a teacher's point of view, as a maths teacher as well, every subject is the same, okay? every subject is the same, you've got to figure out that this whole thing is a game, uh, it is potentially for some people if you start off in the wrong manner, going to be a, can be a long year. But for me, and for a lot of students, six years is the best year of your life. You don't want to let school get in the way. So for 100 points, you've got one exam, one shot at the biology course. You want to be as prepared as possible. Okay. If, again, if, if you were thinking that you're interested in this, you want to refine those 38 topics, the 23 experiments, down into what you need to know, how to perform, predicted ideas, and just ease flow through this year, well, this might be for you. I understand if there's other reasons not to, or you couldn't sign up. We do also have. Well, first of all, I have a an Instagram where I start. I put a little bit of a, a little bit of knowledge up as well. We've got loads of resources on our school website and loads of videos, uh, there as well, which can help you in certain parts as well, and a couple of notes down, downloads as well, uh, which, which might help you out. What we are using just to summarize this is the strategy of a world-class student 
showing you what it is in our specific syntax, which is actually massively important. People don't take order into account. Like say, for example, if you were baking a cake and I gave you a flour, eggs, I don't know what else goes into baking a cake, uh, the tin, the tin foil, and I just said, there you go. That's kind of what happens in school. You get all the ingredients in school, in fact, too many, and you have to pluck out what it is. Okay, we give you the order of how you actually bake this cake. We show you how, what's important in it, and then we can put the cherry on the top at the end. I kind of liken biology to a coloring book. My last favorite analogy. Um, in this coloring book, with all the different dots everywhere, it doesn't make a picture. But over the 29 classes that we are gonna spend together, we're gonna connect those dots, and suddenly it's, we're go I'm gonna tell you what numbers to go one to two to three, like the ones when you were younger, and suddenly it's gonna form a picture, which is gonna be the, the exam at the end. Now, regardless of that, I'm telling you right now, no matter what anybody has said to you, no matter your standard in first to fifth year, maybe you didn't do anything in fifth year, maybe you're taking it up as an extra subject in sixth year, if you study in this manner, using the Dublin Academy of Education principles, even by yourself, you ask yourself the three questions at the start of every single chapter, you are more than capable of being one of those 7.7% .7 of people getting that H1. Okay, if you let other things get in the way, if you go off track, if you go out of it, well, it's very hard to then, you're just keeping your head above water for a while, it's hard to claw it back. So congratulations on starting now and getting the momentum going. I really hope that you're going away knowing how to get marks known the breakdown and strategy and you are fully confident in the topic of photosynthesis potentially 15 percent of your grade i really hope to see you soon thanks so much for tuning in again my name is david lewis head of biology here at the dublin academy of education which doesn't matter because it's not on the leaving cert exam see you soon